Are you open for business? Always. <laughs> Always. Always open for business. I see you got the whole crew here. Yes, sir. Yes. What are we doing today? You, you, you need to help me out because there's something mysterious going on here. Yeah. We are going to be doing our uh, Texas brisket today. What makes yours so great? It's love. Straight Texas, salt and pepper. Keep it basic and uh, use the proper woods. So. You're going to show me? We're going to show you. All right. If I want to do brisket at home, is there some pointers you can give me that I absolutely have to consider? Everyone likes a different amount of fat, right? So we trim ours right down because we reuse the fat into our sausage. This is traditional Texas barbecue 101. You now, know. you're using that word often. Yeah. Traditional Texas barbecue 101. Yeah. What does it mean, Robbie? Is it just because it's where it came from? or? Well, you, you'll have your east and your west, uh, basically. So the KC uh, guys will do a little bit of a different way of uh, prepping their briskets, and then you'll have the guys in Texas, traditionally just your basic seasonings and lots of mopping. Why did you choose that way of doing it? Well, that's where we, that's where we trained, right? So, you know, when I was down in Austin, uh, that's how you learn, and you, you see the people, how they drive for thousands of miles around to get the food down there. You're just trying to mimic it, and perfect it and do it the exact same way. It's not uh, that we're reinventing the wheel here. We're just uh, perfecting it and doing it the exact same way. So. How much of your food here do you make yourself? Uh, absolutely everything that's on our menu. Really? Yeah. Even the bread? Even the bread. It's the only way. We don't have a freezer, we don't have a fryer, we don't have a grill. We have a double stack baking oven and we got three huge smokers. All of our briskets are all CAB. So certified Angus beef and they're all Alberta, 100%. You know, everything is fresh and uh, you gotta keep it authentic. Talk me through the procedure. So trimming takes place, what happens after trimming? We're gonna oil it down. Mm -hmm. We're gonna salt it and it's gonna go in the fridge for the evening. Why oil it? Oil's good. Uh, allows the salt to stick. Any oil? Sunflower oil? We use olive, so preference is whatever the people want. Salt wise, what are we talking about? Just plain table of white salt. It's a light seasoning on the salt. You don't want to over salt your meat. That's 100% for sure. And you'll see Ryan just does a very light salt. And then we rub it in. Look at that, look at that. And that's the only amount of salt? You don't put any more? No, that's all we we'll need right there. Now it'll go in the fridge for the evening. It's going to tenderize it overnight is what it's going to do, right? So, you know, some people will use a nitrate. Uh, we choose not to, and uh, we'll just do it this way, so. This step usually happens the next morning. Yes. We've accelerated things a little here. You've, you've had one already prepared for us. Yeah. And you can already see the color and this is different though. It's Correct. not the, the reddish color any longer. Correct. Yeah, it's uh, the salt has definitely cured the outside. So it's ready to go get it all peppered up here and we'll get it in the smokers. No, it's uh, black pepper with a little bit of seasoning salt again, so. Your special seasoning salt, nobody's allowed to know about it. I wanted to say this is gonna be so easy. All you do is you do a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper back in the smoker. Yeah. But there is something magic going on here. There is a little bit of magic. You're gonna love that when you bite in because you know it's uh, it's not too much pepper, it's just enough. Most of these seasoning salts typically have all the, the basic stuff in. A little bit of sahan, a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder. Um, some people go as far as even putting sandalwood in this. Are you gonna level with me? Is there something more than black pepper? Just give me a hint. Yeah, it's uh, it's black pepper and a couple other things, so. <laughs> He's not gonna take all this. So she's gone in there. Yeah. Are you going to keep her in there for how long? Uh, six to eight hours. Now that's just timing running your smoker at, at 225. With heavy smoke and wood. So after that, it's seen enough smoke. So after that, we pull it out. We'll wrap it in parchment paper, not foil. And we're going to mop it and put it back in until it gets to a temperature of 175, 180. Do you have to describe the perfect smoked brisket? It has to be tender and good. Is it any good? Oh, it's phenomenal. Really, it is phenomenal. That smoking is actually the way to make this meat more tender than any prime rib. So you'll see how the difference in height, point end, flat end. This is like a top sirloin. This one's like a ribeye. More fat in there and more flavor, obviously, on this end. I should say more flavor, but more fat. So, you know, you'll have some people, they love this end and some people love only this end. When you serve here at Big Sky Barbecue, 
do I get to choose if I want the dryer or, or do you give yeah. me a little bit of everything? We try and give a little bit of everything, but if the customer specifically requests one in, we'll give them whatever they want. Yeah. Customers first.